today we make some baits and we bust out the waders to do a little creek fishing, but I've got some help. So last video, we were out at the King with Bob fishing that uh, full-sized half ounce spinner bait, catching my new PB. That was so awesome. If you missed that video, I do encourage you to go check it out one video back. But today, Bob is staying at home, much to his chagrin, and we are getting out the waders. We're busting out the boots, we're busting out the waders, and we're going to go to a local creek and look for the little dudes that live there. The approach today is going to be a swimming bait and a bottom bouncing bait. We are going to pour lead. I got two jig heads that I'm looking at here. One for said swimming bait, the other for said bottom bouncing bait. We will also be shooting plastics for the bottom bait. For the swimming bait though, I have already been taken care of. Joe over at Bait and Tackle, hopefully you guys are subscribed to his channel as well. We're buds and uh, we've been working together on a collaboration. If you are part of his channel, you saw a recent video where I tied up a uh, half ounce bladed jig, sent it to him and he shot some very nice shatterbait trailers and put it on there. My side of the collaboration, I said, hey, you know what? I want to do a creek fishing video and I want to fish the 1.7. I don't own the 1.7. I wish I did. It's on the short list for me to purchase. But for now, I don't own the 1.7 and I thought it was going to be absolutely perfect for a creek fishing extravaganza. So I was like, I know you've got that mold, uh, Joe. Why don't you shoot me up a bag or two and send it over? A bag or two. Dude, hook me up with an entire box of 1.7s. Check this out. All of these goodies. What is that? Nine different colors. We got the loud stuff, right? The pinks and some of these other louder stuff. Then we got the natural, of course, black, green. You know how I love green? Dude freaking hooked me up. So I've got more than enough now to go out and, uh, oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I've got more than enough now as I pick them up off the floor to handle the swimming action. He sent me some uh, custom underspins. These guys here, I believe, are um, his own mold. So I don't want to steal his... Oh, gosh. Sorry. I don't want to steal his thunder. Um, I don't know that this mold has hit his channel yet, so I'm just going to leave it at that. These, this guy is just a hair bigger than I was looking for. It comes out well past this top fin. So I've got some number four 32570s. That's a teeny tiny little dude, but I like the way that this looks. So we're going to pour those up in a 132nd ounce freestyle jig. And then I've got the um, Midwest Finesse, not the weedless. The bait that we're going to be making is just a little too small. I mean, it'll fit, but I think it's just a little too small for the weedless presentation. So we are going back old school. This is a modified mold. I'll show you um, what I mean by that, but we're going to pour these up in 3 30 seconds of a size. I love that. It's between one eighth and one sixteenth for me. It's like the only size that I pour in this for uh, shallower water. So there's the freestyle loaded up. Got the keeper loaded up in there as well in the smallest cavity. One thirty second. And here's the Midwest in that three thirty second size using a size two, uh, 32,570 as I mentioned. This is not a weedless. Uh, mold if you're familiar with it. It was actually modified by somebody else. I bought it this way from a buddy, a uh, fellow bait making buddy. I like the thicker um, wire keepers for these. Obviously it's a little too long so I'll trim it down afterwards as opposed to like the wire keepers that, um, oh you know, like on a wacky jig that are really really thin. I actually like these a little bit better. We're going to pour six of these 
and six of the others just to make sure we have enough. All right, freestyle first. Whoop, doesn't take much on the 132nd. And now the Midwest. Likewise. Let's see how we did. These uh, generally come out because the cavity is so small. You don't really have much to worry about. Oh, I opened up the, the Midwest first. But yeah. Looks good. We'll trim that off as you do. Nice and clean. So I'm going to do five more of each of these, uh, and then we will turn our attention to painting. See, we got the fluid bed out. It's about time to paint, as I mentioned, but here's a look at the final product on the Ned heads, three of them anyway. I ended up um, pouring seven because I forgot the wire keeper on one. You see the uh, final product on the length of that keeper quite a bit longer when you first pour it so I like to push it down and cut it off right in the bend just beyond the barb love this size it's like the perfect little size at least for this guy it is got plenty of those we're gonna do all of those in one little color combo two different cups that we're gonna dive into show you those in a second the uh, freestyles turned out nice as well of course pretty simple cured up I pulled an audible right in the middle of um, pouring these 330 or 132nds thinking that size 4 hook may actually fit the 1 16th as well. So I tried it out and lo and behold it did load it up a bunch. Final product looked just as nice. So we've got some that will get down just a little bit further, may pair up a little bit better with the front of that 1.7 but uh, we got our bases covered. So I got like 11 of those. Not really sure why 11 and not 12. Kind of, kind of bugs my OCD, but we're gonna get over it. Those take a 3DI, but we are not going to put a 3DI on them because I have a plan for the paint for the head color that I think negates the need for an eye. Specifically, we are going to be using Disco Gold and Disco Blue for those heads, which has got all kinds of flake and sparkle and uh, just as good as a 3DI and uh, quite a bit simpler. Let's turn our attention to painting the jig heads. The uh, paint color that I have in mind is a new one called Roadkill by Protec. Yeah, here it is. You see the, can you see that on the camera? I don't know. See this down here? It's got a blue shimmer to it. Oh, very nice. The color is more tan, you know, kind of road roadkill, but it's got that blue shimmer to it, and I think it's going to look pretty dandy. I also pulled down red flake. That's the clear powder that doesn't have anything else in it but super fine flake. I thought pairing it up with the roadkill would look super cool, and when we get to the soft plastics, you'll see why I chose it. There's our roadkill and red flake just a burbling away. Let's turn on the heat. Well, it takes about five seconds on these small ones. Go too long and you'll melt the head right off the top. 330 second heat shrink. Back on the heat to shrink that down. One dip in the roadkill. That looks good and in the red. Before that uh, heat shrink hardens, I like to pop it off. And there's the final product. Of course, before we've cured it, we still need to put it in the oven. But I like that head color. You can just make out some red sparkle every now and then. Moving on now to Disco Gold and Disco Blue. Same deal, five seconds or less. Get that same size, 332nd. Heat shrink on there. One dip on the gold, on the disco stuff. I've noticed that a single dip on the disco paints tends to work out a little better, especially not putting it back on the heat definitely helps. There's a gold one. Looking pretty good. And a blue one. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Dang. I love these disco colors. Before I finish painting those, those disco golds and blues, I wanted to show you something. 
this is the Ned head, by the way. The top one is uh, with the clear coat of red. Look at the bottom one, how much more blue comes out without that uh, red clear flake added. So I saw that as I was doing it, um, I, could, I could see the blue right before I dipped it in the clear red. So I ended up making, I don't know, four or five of both. I, I kind of like, I'm sacrificing the red. I like that bottom one a little bit better. It is time to cure these guys. Cool oven here, obviously, <laughs> putting my hand in it. But here are our um, net heads in the jig rack. I've mentioned it before, but if you are uh, interested in this jig rack and you haven't seen the video, you can search my channel for uh, jig rack, how to build one of these yourselves. And then here are the uh, smaller ones, 132nd and 116th. Look at those blue ones. Woo! Now, interesting. Look at this guy right here. See how much darker he is? I got too much heat on this one. It was on the heat for a little over five seconds, maybe even six. And you can see how much, that's not double dip, that's not um, double heated, that's just the, the initial heat up. Got it on there too long. That one there, I knocked down to four seconds, three and a half to four seconds, and look at how much more sparkly it is. Yeah, so we've kind of got the, the gambit here. Too much, kind of in between, that's the goal. So just keep that in mind when you're using um, these discos, especially the gold. I mean, I know that I got some of these blue ones a little too hot too, but they've all turned out. But there's something about this gold, it doesn't like extra heat. Didn't plan on getting all <laughs> jig head and paint into the details way down into the weeds. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this uh, and you find it helpful. But anyway, into the oven they go. Calibrate your oven, make sure it's calibrated. I set mine to 300 because it really runs at around 350 at that level, 325, 350. It is a cool oven. So I put it on 25 minutes, that gives it time to heat up, and then 20 minutes for the cure. Y'all want to see the mold for today? It's a good one. 2.2 inch caddisfly larva in a 12 cavity. Check this out. Look at that guy. Y'all remember the movie Tremors? The snakeoids in Tremors? That's what this reminds me of. And when I was selling it on the site, I would call it, uh, that was my name for it. It was Little Tremors. It just looks like a little tremor to me. So these are gonna be sweet. So that's what we're going to shoot today. The color I have in mind is a color shift, not from Alpha Pigments this time, going back to some of my favorites from Barlow's. In the Lava Craw series, they've got traditional Lava Craw, which is fantastic. They've got Lava Craw Green, which we have done on the channel before. Also, one of my top five, probably, natural colors. This one is Lava Craw Blue. Lots of rain lately, and that muddies up the, uh, the river, so I wanted something on that other side with a little bit of flash, and I picked out this Lure Works Gunmetal in .005. So it's, it's like a darker silver. You can see it's almost blackish, but then it's real sparkly. I mean, it's, it's aptly named. It's called gunmetal, and that's what it looks like. First cup is ready to go. One cup of Bait Plastics 242, just like we always use here on the channel. Lava Craw Blue, 1 8 of a teaspoon. Lava Craw Blue, blue, which is why I chose Roadkill with that blue tint, you know? And the red, the lava crawl with the red and the, anyway, that looks pretty good. I'm actually gonna add just a touch more, maybe a 16th, like a half of an eighth. I really want that to saturate through, give us a good, nice thick color. Yeah, there we go, Arlo's. Flake-wise, again, all of our flake is on the bottom, shimmy, 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 right? So we don't have to put a bunch in the top, but I do 
want a little bit of that natural flavor. So we're going back to my tried and true quarter teaspoon per cup of 062, the big stuff. And I'm dropping down to a 1 16th. I usually do an eighth, but a 1 16th, there's our other plastic, of the uh, 015. I think that'll give us a little bit of extra, you know, molting. I don't know, is that, is that a, I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm saying. But you get what I'm saying now, right? Just a little bit of texture and naturality. Color number two, ready to rock and roll. One cup as well, same stuff. Gunmetal, and uh, we are not gonna be bashful. I have got one teaspoon, entire teaspoon, and if we don't think that's enough, I'll dip back in. Let's see what that looks like. I do like this flake, mercy. A little on the darker side, but you still have lots of that flash. Does it need something? Blue. Let's throw some blue in it. Just, just a little. Let's go with 1 16th of Lure Works Royal Blue. It's the best blue I have found, especially if you're doing a black and blue. It's the same stuff that Joe just used, matter of fact. When he pulled that out, I was like, you know. There we go. Some of the other blues that are out there, I mean, they're, they're okay, but I just lose them. This one is a strong blue and it stays, I don't know, you can just see it better. Yeah, just enough. I didn't want a ton, but that, I would say pretty darn close to perfect. All right, these are right around uh, 325, between 325 and 330. The mold is symmetric, so we don't have to worry about back versus belly. You can just shoot it any way you want to. Both sides are the same. Won't take much either, but I'll draw almost a full deal just to make sure we get a good shot. Yeah, that was it. We'll be shooting at least one more set of these. That Lava Craw Blue is just dynamite. And there's our sparkle back. Hopefully, um, it's saturated enough with, with the flake. We'll have to see. If it doesn't look like it is quite where it should be, then we'll add some more and we'll do this again. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh yeah. So there's our sparkle-tastic side. Gonna be just enough flash some of that dirtier water looks good so far oh, come on y'all deserve to be zoomed in look at that again wow what a color what a color and that black that uh, large and, and small mix just makes it look so buggy so natural, so little tremor, right? My little tremors. Man, those are killer. Oh, love it. Love it. And how about the mold, guys? Come on. Trout, panfish, smallies. Look at that. Goodness gracious me. What a color. Lava craw, blue. In this mold, hmm, I love it in the the two and a half inch Ned Craw too. Made some of those for a buddy a while back. It's just killer. It's just absolutely dynamite, and I love this mold. Totally geek out over it. Look at the ribbing, and it's you can see that it's thinner. Oh man, and then those two on the back. Ah, it's killer. And there we got our flash. <laughs> Check that out. Oh my gosh, that is going to get smashed. If it doesn't, it's my fault, <laughs> not the bait. Wow. That little blue shimmer, 
and you got the blue shimmer on top. Even that the flake in the head, picking up the flake. Oh gosh. And then we got that as it's sitting, right? It's just wang wang hang wang hang hang come over here and bite me. Here's uh 132nd on the 1.7 looking dynamite. Oh yes. And last but not least, uh, 1 16th also on the 1.7. This has got to be my favorite though. I think that size head, right, if I can get away with it um, and don't need to be that small, that light, I know the creek I'm going to is pretty shallow, but if I can get away with this, that pairing right there, golly, it's just right. To be honest, it's making me look fat. Figured we would start with Joe's 1.7s and that blue head just looks so good. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. <sighs> Apparently I forgot how to walk. My reel is all caked up. Oh my lands. Maybe there's something to that whole Bill Dance comment. If it's not a net, it must be my ability to walk and talk at the same time. Well, despite my best efforts, we're here. Let's see if we can get bit. Oh, there's one right there. Second cast. I was hearing voices to my right and not paying attention. Look at that guy. What a beautiful little largy. How about that? On the one seven. There you go, Joe. Catches on the second cast. <laughs> right in the little current seam here. Very cool. So that's where we just came from on the other side. Kind of the calm before the ripple here. This little one seven looks so juicy in the water. Oh my word. Another fantastic mold by Epic. Oh, there's one right there. And the fish agree, another largey. Looky there. <laughs> Little Creek Largemouth. Largemouth get a bad rap, but I for one like them. Thanks, buddy. All right, that's two. Ooh, right on the edge. Surprised we didn't find anything here. I thought for sure we were gonna find one lurking and maybe there is one he just didn't want what I had but did snag and my line got all frayed so swapped out took the opportunity to change out heads and uh, color disco gold and that nice watermelon from Joe that is looking tasty well that's where I want to be and I see little to no feasible way to get there and it is deep right there. We may have to fish from the bank on this one until we get above those riffles. That's all right. Anything living in the deep stuff? We're running out of real estate. So I swapped out to the Ned Rig because I'm not done here. Let's see if we can't find one by bouncing on the bottom. Oh no. Ah, broke off my whole leader. Instead of taking the time to tie on another, which I will do uh, eventually, let's go back, back to the prey bait and move upstream here.
creek fishing sure is pretty. River fishing, creek fishing. The Lord's creation is something else. Well, I made it back to the truck. My little creek here, local to me, kind of let me down today. Although we did catch two, Joe was my hero today. The 1.7's produced. I don't feel like I have closure though. I don't feel like I'm quite done. I don't have another creek to go to, but I'm thinking we head out to Maple. I'm gonna put another leader on my, uh, on my Ned Rig rod, so I'm ready to fish some docks out there. And we're gonna throw around that 1.7 too. Well, we've got an hour left on this SD card. And that's all she wrote. So we have made it out to Maple. Let's see if we can scare up a bite. No love at this dock. Let's try the 1.7. See this bubbler out here? I have always wanted to throw a 1.7 around that bubbler because it attracts and holds some fishy fish. It'll drop a little bit. Let's see, if, oh, oh, I got bit. Right there it was. There we go. Oh, where'd he go? <laughs> Let's try that again. Eat it. Every time. They're thwacking it like that. Oh. oh. They ate my tail. Well, that confirms that they're just barely grabbing the tail. Let's move down. There's one. <laughs> the same size as our creek bass. Thanks for biting, buddy. Well, that's three on the one seven. Time to get bit on our little trimmer. And do you see where we are? The dock. <laughs> For those that have been around the channel, at least this summer, this will be a familiar location. Made some stick baits, caught a bunch of fish right here with uh, stick baits one time. But also, right underneath of that uh, ladder, right in that corner, hooked a giant on the kayak and lost it. Have not seen anything even close to that size around here since. But we're here to see if any of his, perhaps his little brothers are around. Let's visit the other side. Way up under. There's one. Yeah, come on. How's the saying go? <laughs> you gotta risk it for the biscuit. And we risked it on six pound line underneath of that dock. He's no giant, but boy, he wanted it. Sweet. I knew they'd eat this little tremor. Such a good bait. Way bigger than that out there that would eat it. That's for sure. Thanks, bud. Back home in the shop, a pretty decent day. I wouldn't say that our uh, local creek here was quite in fuego, but hey, we did catch a few thanks to Joe. Thanks again, buddy, for sending me that box of baits. And it was cool to get out to Maple. Caught a couple more out there. That last one on the Ned, I know that guy is gonna catch me a ton of fish. Definitely a mold to go check out if you like to Ned Rig like I do. Guys, thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the journey. I hope you had fun watching it. Even me falling on my face. Hmm, good times. Appreciate you guys coming along. And until the next time, see you guys in the shop.